Hi, and welcome to Making Vinyl at MasterDisc. I'm Scott Hull, Chief Engineer and Owner of MasterDisc, and my engineer and cutting engineer, Garrett Robinson, joining us as usual. Our short subject for today is the marker. It's the spiral. Uh, it's the thing on the record that nobody really knows it's there, but everybody knows it's there. What the for heck those, am I talking about? For those daring enough to recognize it. Well, basically, is how do you know where track two is? Uh, there's a little extra space. So, I don't have, if you can't see it on here, we'll do a close up. So, about halfway through this side, there's a little space. On every record that you have that's more than one track, you'll see those little gaps. And um, people always wonder how they're made. It's very simple. The speed that the cutter head is moving across the disc is relatively slow while the music is playing. And then when we get to the end of the track, we press a button on the remote here. It's called marker. And for a moment, for just basically about one revolution, the cutter head speeds up for a second and then goes back to its normal pacing. That changes the image, changes the view of what it looks like on the disc. So basically the grooves are all nestled up close together and they're reflecting light in a certain way. And now suddenly there's a big gap between one groove and another groove and that space is literally uncut lacquer. Mm -hmm. And that should be where you put the needle down to cue up for the second track. We have control over how big that marker is. Like on a, a disco 12 inch where there's you know two four minute songs on one 12 inch side, we might put a big marker between them because somebody's going to use it as a DJ and it wants to be able to want to be able to find that. But using a big marker uses up valuable disc space. resources. So if it's a 22, 24, or 25, 28 minute side, we can't put big markers on. You know, we may put just absolutely just barely visible markers. And in some cases, we just use, uh, we add a little land between. Manual Just marker. manually create a marker. It's very subtle, but it helps us conserve space. The uh, controller has a setting for how many seconds that spiral pitch happens. While talking about marker, we also talk about the rate of, of cutting and the, the way the disc is laid out. I've got a really nice uh, graphic that we'll put on here of an overview of the record. So at the outside of the record, the first spot that the, the cutter head drops down is making what's called a safety groove. This is a locked groove that goes all the way around the perimeter and it's a deeper groove. This is intended to catch the stylus so that it doesn't fall off the record if you have an, a small accident while, while cueing it manually. If you, you know, throw the tone arm down on the record hard, it's going to bounce off and could damage the stylus. But if you're reasonably careful, it'll drop into the safety groove. And most changers, automatic changers, where you press a button and the, the tone arm lifts up and moves over for you, they're um, designed to fall into that safety groove. Right. And you'll hear, usually hear them drop and then kunk as they fall into the safety groove. Then they do one revolution around and then they go on their journey. The groove peels off and starts the first fast section. Fast being a term because that's what it's labeled on the button <laughs> called fast. But that's just a higher speed motion of the lead screw as the cutter head moves across. It's never really been explained to me why we do that. Why we don't cut, start cutting audio right after the groove. But I, I think it's quite basic in that um, you don't know exactly where the consumer is going to put the needle down. If it's manually dropped, you know, they're going to have a really hard time getting that first downbeat. Yeah. Give them the, a landing pad to... It's something to it. land on and then an opportunity to go sit down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the noisiest part of most pressings is this first inch. So it's an area where we kind of, you know, we wouldn't record audio unless we really needed to. Now, for those that like to be creative, there's no reason we couldn't put audio in that section. We absolutely can. It's not standard. Mm -hmm. And your consumer might think it's something's weird, but it could also be very cool. To this point, I don't know if Jack White's done that or not. <laughs> he probably has. He's done pretty yeah, much everything yeah. else that you could ever imagine with putting crazy 
things into records, including records pressed with liquid in the middle of them. Yeah. That, that spins outward when the record spins, and they, uh, it's trippy, amongst a lot of other crazy things. So, safety groove, fast. Then our first audio comes just as soon as the pitch drops back down to our basic pitch. Then it moves across the record until we get to a band between the two songs. That spiral or marker or band, or even sometimes referred to as a time marker, so all just different names for the same thing, that moves the cutter head over a little bit for just a few tenths of a second, half a second maybe, about one revolution or a little less. And continues on until we get to the end of program where we press the fast button and that's what causes the needle to move quickly into the locked groove at the end. Some changers actually sense that quick motion laterally and it mechanically lifts up the tone arm before it reaches the locked groove. The idea there is they want the needle to come out of the groove because uh, it's just repetition and noisy and it wears out the stylus and wears out the record. But if you put music in the lockout, which is super cool, and super fun cool, do. and of course we can do that, um, then you'll, the consumer that have an automatic reject turntable won't hear it, or it'll be interrupted. Um, again, no reason why we can't make audio go all the way to the locked groove, but there is a specification. Um, made by the RIAA, can coincidentally seem people that specified the filter frequencies we talked about another time. Um, you are supposed to end audio at by a specific point on the disc so that there's one revolution at fast, at the fast speed where you can write the scribe number in. Interesting problem with doing the racetrack groove that I talked about on a previous episode. When you do a racetrack groove, you have to record all the way out to the to the locked groove. If you press fast on one, they're going to they're going to cross over. Yeah. yeah. Or or else you have to be so carefully timed that that both times you pass you hit fast at exactly the same time and it happens so quickly that you would scrap parts, you know. You'd go through a box of lacquers well before you got the, the project finished. So that's the anatomy or the geography <laughs> of a record itself. Um, interestingly enough, in a pressing, the label surface is raised slightly and the outer edge is raised slightly so that even when you stack them up on a changer, the grooves don't touch each other. But that said, changers still put a lot of wear and tear on records because of the dropping. And if there is dust or debris on your record, you can the, get the grinding. Yeah, the grit. make a, yeah. a, a, a a mojita there, you know, by <laughs> the pestle, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, grinding your grooves uh, uh, to death. Um, that's about it. Yeah. Things you don't know that you needed to know, but now you know. <laughs> we're, we're trying to be that, uh, be the uh, information, the, the, uh, the, um, the information oh, yeah. substation. <laughs> <laughs> you got them today. I don't have them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to sign off because. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Making Vinyl at MasterDisc, the comedy uh, with Garrett Robinson and myself, Scott Hall. See you next time.